All right, here are some Kerrigan tips. First of all, the build. Her win rates are okay for both siphoning impact, sharpened blades and block. Personally, I prefer sharpened blades everywhere, except on Infernal Shrines. The skeletons <laughs> are easy to get your healing back on Infernal Shrines. So just imagine on Infernal you get clean kill with siphoning. But for the rest, I kind of follow the formula. More damage equals more shields. Sharpened blades. Psionic Pulse. Bladed Momentum. Milestrum. Uh, Eviscerate is really good, but I usually just derp out and go full damage. Double strike. Here, each one is okay. I think aggressive defense is the safest, easiest to use. Overdrive, really powerful. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will not go with overdrive. But you can see how more damage means less mana, but also more shields. This one is also more shields. More, more shields, but no more damage. So aggressive defense. And then finally, right. the best is Bolt. It gives you lots of flexibility. It can be game winning. However, I just take more damage and therefore more shields. All right. But that, that's part of the build. You can find more builds in my Robogrub. But I want to tell you mostly about how Kerrigan works. First of all, her Q is a decent range. Good damage. If you kill something with it. If you kill something with it, you can use it again immediately. As far as Welcome back, Grubby. If you don't kill Your it immediately, it's also okay. Best metaphors, e, you less than three. On my way. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Das Flume. So anyway, that's that's Q. Uh, sometimes you can use Q to do multiple jumps to juke people. As such. Uh, so you kill something, you know you're gonna kill it. And then you jump on something else. So it's like hoppity skippity dumb. Uh, like a bunny. And then they cannot follow your progress. It's pretty cool. But here comes the main skill of Kerrigan. It's called her combo. Impaling Blades has a delay. About one second delay. 1.25. Sweeping Grasp. Tiny delay. 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds. If you cast Impaling Blades first and then Primal Grasp. You'll be able to pull people in for a guaranteed stun. This is the, basically the linchpin of Kerrigan skill. Now, that is how it works. You must first W and then E. But what about the distance? You see a lot of people using W and E at max range. It's bad. You pull them out of the stun. I'll show you why it's bad. You don't want to do that. Nor do you want to pull people in and then try to stun them. Arthas will stand still, real life opponents won't. Okay. Now, here is how to use your combo on someone to follow up. How to allow your team to follow up on it. You can even solo people with Kerrigan. Basically, if someone is at max range of Primal Grasp, you want to put the W, the Impaling Blades, roughly exactly in between you and the target. And you will get the stun. Okay? I showed that. I'll only show you the one time. You can always watch back the VOD. Now, if someone is at melee range, no you want to put the W under yourself and then sweep and grasp them. I am the As the, uh, like follows. And they will get stunned. If they are at medium range, Not melee, but not max range. You want to put it roughly near your the tip of your own toes. No and you'll get the stun. Now there are a few other cases which are pretty interesting. Because you will face, as you climb the ladder, if you climb the ladder, people who are able to dodge Kerrigan stun more and more. If I jump for an Arthas in a real life match like this, and then I try to combo him, that was a bit of a weird sweeping grass, but you get the point. He will start to do evasive maneuvering. Now, the easiest way to dodge Kerrigan combo is to walk towards her. As you can see, it is a short, smaller arc near herself. To walk towards her while at the same time walking to the exact side. So, if this Arthas moves here uh, or here, that will be the best. If he walks away, I have a pretty forgiving range. So I might still get the stun. Right. 
right? So what you can do, if you know you're playing against a good player that will uh, try to juke your combo, is to choose a random direction to do your combo. Like this. It'll be kind of random and you may not get it, but it's still roughly 50-50 if you know they're going to dodge. If you can see by their behavior that their eyes are open. Not like that, obviously. You kind of need to uh, get used to like this. I am the so that is just something that requires some practice. And you can practice all of this in the shop. Now, every now and then you'll still have bad combos. You're not going to be 100%. But with practice, you can get better and better. I just won with Savannah, so we now move over to Mecha Tassadar. Give it up for Grandmaster Grove. <laughs> Hey, I saw a tip that if you always put it halfway between you and the opponent, you will always hit. Well, that is simply not true. If they are at melee range and you put it halfway between you and them, and you sweep them in just as they walk on top of you, they will end up almost behind you and the stun will not hit. What I said was pretty much accurate. Do you think assimilation mastery can be better than the battle momentum, or is it always better? I think bladed momentum is always better than assimilation mastery. Even, even in a quick match game without support. But Assimilation Mastery is not very far behind in a game without support. It's just that it has laning value, so you don't have to hardstone as often. But it doesn't have a lot of in-combat utility, Assimilation Mastery. I'm assuming you're going to go into fights mostly with full mana. And when you have Ass Mastery... You will never go out of mana, but when you have bladed momentum, you will also not go out of mana. If you are, that means you already killed everybody. The life gain is only double. It's like 4 bonus health regen, thanks to Ass Mastery. And that is basically like 3-4 regeneration globes for any other character that has regen master. So it is not a very strong in combat f uh, utility. The shields also last longer, is, is that not true? No, yeah, yeah, they also last twice as long, 12 seconds instead of 6. But again, that has very little in-combat utility because you're probably taking damage anyway, you don't need it to last 12 seconds. So there you go. Ass Mastery has some utility but it's not nearly as good as Battle Momentum. Could you please explain why Greymane suddenly dropped in priority? At Gamescom we barely saw him, while he was a top priority with Tyrael just before. Mm. Greymane deletes ranged assassins. And there was loads of... Uh, um, there was loads of double warrior at Gamescom. So his priority went down a bit. You prefer Greymane against like 1-1-3. Not 2-2-1. Or 2 1 2. Hmm. We'll ban Zagara. They will ban Falstad, Illidan, or Kerrigan, or something. We get Zul. If you can mush 5 heroes in the beginning of the fight, do you do it or not? Because you say it mid-fight. Yes, if you can get 5 at the beginning, definitely. But it happens so infrequently. It is time. Now, you don't really rely on your allies for damage and energy. I am dynamic, even with Ariel, because you can still take Energized Cord at 7, which gives you more control over your energy, or you can take Empathic Link. Even the worst allies will take a lot of damage, which gives you more Empathic Link energy. You can get Master Skin from playing versus AI Valdis Prime. Pretty dumb question. There 
Uh, so far, Kerrigan seems great. Wait till they get a load of me. We have good XP rotation. We've got a good support. They have a specialist, Nazibo. One of Nazibo's biggest weaknesses is melee assassins. Illidan, Kerrigan. So there you go. <laughs> Smart ban. Don't think my team would have... Oh yeah, they would have. Not needed, Ima. Why is there a tier S? Oh, I'll be happy to explain that to you. Tier S is called top tier. It is just traditional by now. We could go from 1 to 6 or we can say tier S and then 1 to 5. You can also call it god tier or top tier. I say this is... Oh, frack. Sorry. Sorry. I forgot ban. I don't even know what it would have banned. Maybe a warrior. Um, you can always pick first. They're stronger than other heroes with a similar role. You should first ban one of these. So, I banned Zagara uh, first, and they ban Tyrael. Uh, Ar Arthas, actually. So they ban Arthas, uh, which is pretty funny. Their second ban is Tyrael, which is also, by my reckoning, a tier S. And our first pick is Kerrigan. Well, our second pick is Kerrigan, who's the top tier. And then we take Zul, who is the... Third best specialist, in my opinion. First Zog, then Sylph, then Zul. So on this battleground, having Zul makes me very happy. Because we've got the third best spec here. And you probably want one spec on Tomb of the Spider Queen. I remove Zog because I don't, don't want to face her. Sylph is the next best, but she's kind of difficult to play. Um, not difficult to disable stuff, but she's difficult to maximize. Let's say it like that. Oh shit, Artanis uh, Lover is here. Quickly, hide my tier list. <laughs> the hunt is on. What's up, Trixler? I will fight to my last breath. Yes, uh, tier S heroes are the ones you can pick almost no matter what draft you have, or pretty much no matter what draft. If you're good with uh, them, or even not amazing, those heroes are great. Hmm. Really nice team to play Kerrigan against. Once Dampen Magic is gone, if Anubrak ever uses Dampen Magic and Burrow Charge, I can kill him so easy. Uh, the reason Tyrael's in tier S right now is a number of things. One, they buffed his Holy Ground. Completely beyond my, my understanding, he got one second off of Holy Ground if you take the level 4 Q reduction and the level 16 Q thing. So... That is crazy. Uh, Imposing Will did not get nerfed. One of his craziest talents. Sanct, still around. Still Divine Shield for the whole team. And it's kind of a melee assassin plus warrior draft meta. Tyrael is amazing on uh, melee assassins. So th this is why. Uh, Zul suffers a bit from double warrior meta, Blaine Storm. But... Tychus, he just rose to the top in the meta, in the pro play, at least in Europe. I think maybe in Korea as well. So the more Tychus we see, the fewer double warrior we're going to see. We're going to see more melee assassin plus warrior. And that, in return, brings Zul to the forefront. Because Zul is good against melee assassins. He's got the attack speed slow, he can root them. CC is always good against melee assassins. And then he doesn't have to face two chunky warriors, who he kind of has trouble uh, staying alive against. Uh, let's see. They have so many summons from Anubrak and Azibo that I'm gonna go for the Q build. I can jump on any beetle, get a reset on my Q, any minion, either from the objective or from the lanes, and any zombie. I can use them to navigate around to gain greater mobility and also to uh, uh, chase people down, escape, and so on and so on. Cool thing about Kerrigan on this battleground is that she actually makes the gems easier to pick up due to sweeping gra uh, pri primal grasp. And that chain lightning ruined my plans of going to the bottom lane. 
We clear so fast that we had nothing to do for 10 seconds. That is crazy. Do you think double tank meta will change very soon? I think so. Tychus' rise has kind of been shrekking tanks. I can sense your fear. Yeah, he's dead. You just need to see how they juke for a little bit before you do your combo, especially when you're in a position of luxury. Like if you've got two, three people wailing away with auto attacks at a single person, do not try to instant combo. It's the only way they can actually get away. Just wait to see until they have no more recourse except to immediately go away in a straight line straight to their base. And then the combo really isn't that hard to hit. I'm gonna go for the clean kill now. Hey Grub, it was a pretty sick combo for Zul where you could pick slow on your scythe and then executioner. It doesn't work anymore. Uh, yeah, I've never tried it, so I can't really say why it does or doesn't work. Again, very easy to predict uh, Nazibo's moves. So, straight combo there. And this is why you don't draft Nazebo except in final position, which is why he's actually kind of lowly rated. Because melee assassins take a big dump on him. Now, I got pretty overconfident in the other Kerrigan game on Infernal Shrines, where they had a Rainer. We kept winning, winning, winning until we didn't. So let's try not to get overconfident this time. Does he even have dump and magic? He doesn't. What the frick? I guess he doesn't really need it against us, but still really shocks me, actually. It's so good. Why is Zul solo bot? It's a great question. It's not bad, actually, but it doesn't fully make use of his rotation. Think about it. Think about this, though. We've got Johanna. Johanna fills the same role as Zul. Really good rotational force. The alternative would be putting Zul in the mid and then Johanna bot, but I think Johanna offers a pretty nice backbone to our rotation, so I don't mind it too much. This is where you get bladed momentum, reset your cooldowns. I missed the start, why are you going to shrine's build instead of your standard? Ah, that is because uh, they have Anubarak and Nazebo. Nazebo's zombies and Anubarak's beetles provide very nice jumping points for me. So I can reposition, chase down, or even save myself. And this is a map with the most amount of small little minions in lane. Uh, all the, uh, the webby small minions are, are also really good jump points. Okay, he's dead too, maybe. Yeah, he's dead too. Bladed momentum so good, you just get your Q back for a huge bonus burst. Look, this is how you do multi-jumps. You jump on a minion and then suddenly you jump on a person. And that's how you can kill them. Oh, that one last auto attack. Oh! <laughs> I missed up my... <laughs> I 
I did W plus R. <laughs> Four deaths for the price of one. <laughs> Shit. I clicked the wrong button. I didn't expect it. I got so shocked from getting revived. Feels really bad, man. Feels really, really bad. Nice cleanse. Oh, I got it, I got it. Don't die for it. Yeah, I knew he was gonna die. This game I won't get overconfident. It wasn't that, it was just a misclick. Due to being shocked at getting revived. Oh. <laughs> Okay, we just, uh, because of that mistake that I made, we just almost fell to even. Feels kind of bad. We still have the better drop, though. That, uh, that Rhaegar was way too far forward. So it was such an easy combo, and I somehow got a free few bonus uh, people. He lowered the zombie wall because I was gonna use it to jump and get shields and health. Is Ariel Resurrect a good alt now? Well, to be honest, I still think Crystal Aegis is better, but he's been making pretty good use of uh, the Resurrect. Just because I ruined the first Resurrect doesn't mean it was bad. Think about it like this. If he Crystal Aegis's me, I actually lose my Maelstrom. So it's pretty okay to Resurrect the Kerrigan rather than to... Uh, yeah, not Resurrect. Like to, to Aegis. That's cleanse down, it's pretty nice. I am losing a lot of HP. Ah. Oh, that hurts. Oh, oh, hello. Nice. Pretty cool. I like the resurrects. It's uh, it keeps us, it keeps giving us uh, map control. Okay, I am way too deep. So is bot lane, so I should not engage now. Wait, Zul's paying, so we won't need to cancel them anymore. Yeah, we're getting a lot of value out of the uh, Resurrect. Pretty cool. It did get buffed. I still didn't think that it would see any play, but it seems to be the good one. Resurrect cooldown is 70 seconds. The fact that it gives me half-life is kind of interesting too. Oh, 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 oh. That was a bad engage. He can't resurrect me, but he would have to kind of loop around the top or something. Here we go, here we go. 
Hype. <lacht> Hype. Oh. Now I'll kind of let Johanna start the fight. Resurrect? This guy is making the plays here. I don't know why they're chasing, but I think we're happy with that. If we just get a bit more HP on Johanna. Uh, I would get overdrive. That's a lot of gems. Does she have resurrect? Okay, I can go full idiot. Ouch. I'm waiting for them to overextend. And then it can just re-engage. You don't think that's how it works? You mean I shouldn't intentionally die? It's okay if I can kill two people with it. Oh, we're doing boss? I think I missed that call. They can still pay. I'll go get some mana. Bien, le bonsoir, bon, bonsoir, grubby. Oh, my French. Yes, good evening to you as well. My conquest continues. Not the number one, Zony. Are we still doing it? Okay, let's finish it. Okay, they will have paid by now at the bottom probably, but we can probably just go for it. Thanks. Yes, I have some trouble speaking Dutch sometimes for Rato. I barely speak it anymore, so it can get pretty out of practice. In fact, when I walk my dog, that's almost the only time I ever speak Dutch. And when I do, sometimes they say I have an English accent, which is kind of weird because I have a Dutch accent in English. I don't belong anymore, except with Twitch chat. I would love to wait for the spell shield on Thrall to be gone before trying to focus him or something. He's also one of my main targets. I need that resurrect. 12% <laughs> not really enough for uh, the amount of gems that we're losing here. <laughs> Get in there, Ariel! <laughs> the <laughs> Don't worry, Twitch chat only requires memes and emotes. Yeah, I guess the only equivalent of having an accent in Twitch chat is miscapitalizing your emote. For example, Kappa with the small K. It's like, oh, I see you have an accent. Not quite perfect, but I know what you mean. Never retreat. Why doesn't he revive me? I'm ready. I've got five seconds left before I get really mad. Ah, uh, you guys all have an, a slight accent in your Kappa. <laughs> Ooh, baby, baby, baby. Wow, that's a big heal. Did he take Reservoir of Hope? No, he went for 20% attack speed. Well, she used her uh, teleport in.
That was an easy kill. Just teleport in. Uh, no more escape. Yes, please. We can finish the final 80% now. Oh, hello. He has an accent too. Nexus Blades. <laughs> Even took the bonus movement speed. So sick. Oh joy. Oh joy. One more time. I need y'all to roar. <laughs> this Ariel. Excellent matchmaking experience. Hey, my pleasure, the hickey. <sighs> my question is does putting someone at a resurrect giving them half life does that constitute healing amount I don't know does overdrive dismount uh, no I don't think so but you should not use overdrive unless you're immediately afterwards gonna ravage anyway oh, oh. Oh, head darker. What? Ah. Uh, cancel no. me. Yes. Okay, kill them all, please. <laughs> Get away, bad man. Oh, that recall was sick. One second to shield. Oh, Terra is uh, someone needs support. Oh, okay, port now. They are losing plans. their Terra as well. Plans, we're losing plans. No, someone okay. has to. It's gone. Oh, okay, it's a fine, it's fine. <laughs> 